In this episode, I join the guys from Deep Blue Kayak Fishing with eight other kayak anglers at Los Buzos Resort in Panama for five days of epic offshore fishing. Yeah, where's the guy? Oh yeah. yeah. The resort did not disappoint. Fish on! Oh, something good, he made a huge run in the beginning. Wahoo, wahoo! This is a story full of ups and downs as I work to figure out the fishery off Panama's Pacific coast. Lost it. Oh, I've never ever had a run like that. The tuna, that was incredible. My journey to Los Buzos Resort begins with flights from Dallas to Miami to Panama City, where I meet the other eight anglers I'll be fishing with all week. Cheers! Cheers! Woo! Woo! Yeah. From there, we hop on a bus for the six-hour ride through the Panamanian countryside to Cambutal, a small fishing and surfing town nestled deep within the rainforest on the Pacific coast. Morris Palmer, owner of Los Buzos and our host for the week, greets us when we arrive. With eight hardcore anglers in the group, there's no time for sightseeing. We immediately begin rigging up to fish the next morning. All right guys, morning day one. Currently getting all of our stuff ready and then we just gotta wait for the tide to, uh, to get over high tide so we can get out through the surf. Uh, the tides here are extreme, about 16 to 20 feet each way. And so when the tide is not right, it's impossible to get out through the surf. So uh, just kind of waiting game, we're waiting until about nine o'clock and then we should be able to get out. But uh, people are looking excited, except for this guy, weirdo. <laughs> Joe Kratz, winner of the 2016 Battle in the Bahamas. I'm just gonna follow you around all week, bro. So every day, two people are gonna jump in this pongo with their kayaks, and it's gonna take them about six to eight miles down the beach to what they call the lump and it's supposed to be just killer fishing out there, but we can only take two people at a time. So everyone's gonna take turns throughout the week. <laughs> Plow right through it, you'll be fine. All right, so the basic strategy that we're gonna employ here, uh, I'm gonna start off trolling this deep diver right here, see if I can't catch something on artificial. Then I've got this small spoon, uh, kind of like a little jig, that I'm gonna cast out to try to catch Bonita, and then we'll use those Bonita as live bait and put this away. So kind of use this until we can get some live bait in the boat, and then we'll start trolling the live bait, and that's what pretty much everything out here is gonna eat. Kind of jack so i'm not sure what this guy is it's some kind of jack but i'm gonna throw it on the live bait rig it can't hurt all right got the j hook through the nose dinger down by its tail we're gonna throw this out see if we can entice something a little bigger nice oh beautiful fish man barred pargo you said barred pargo rock snapper rock snapper so it's a type of snapper All of us begin catching a wide variety of species, many of which we don't recognize, as we work to find bait and figure out this fishery. So Ben Parrott just caught this uh, kind of mystery fish. We're not really familiar with what's out here. Not exactly uh, the monster bait I'm out here to catch. <laughs> fish on! I think my live bait swam into the rocks. Uh... While the core group of us in front of the lodge struggle to figure things out, the anglers who took a panga to the lump eight miles down the coast are faring much better. Oh yeah! 
you got it. Wahoo! 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 Woo! Wahoo! I traded all my tunas for that. <laughs> His tail was all wrapped around in him in the line. I thought I lost him, so I just stabbed him with the gaff twice. Let me see it. Hold up, hold up. Yeah. Wahoo. Meanwhile, back at the lodge, I've been distracted by the humpback whales that migrate along the coast this time of year. Oh my gosh, what an incredible experience seeing it that close. My heart's racing. The humpback whales are here uh, to mate and have young, so I heard they can be a little aggressive, a little territorial. Uh, so I gotta be careful getting too close. I can hear their sounds, I can hear them calling but I don't know where it is. Oh my gosh, now I'm nervous. I'm close to him and I do not want him to come up from underneath me. That was absolutely incredible. Suddenly I'm snapped out of my whale watching tour when Benton comes over and tells me he's finally caught something worth eating. What you got there, Benton? Uh, I believe they call him a Sierra mackerel. Sierra mackerel, looks kind of like a cross between a yeah, Spanish and a king. They say these taste like grouper here, so uh, we'll find out. I think that's good eating size too. I don't think you want to keep the real big ones. Fish all, fish all. Oh yeah. Fish all. Something bit the live bait I had out. Oh, can't tell what it is. It's tough to tell. Oh, no way. No way. Oh my. Gosh. Somehow my fluoro broke. Maybe three, four feet from where my wire leader was. I mean, it looks like it got bit through, but I mean, I know that's not possible. That, that's a good six feet from where the hooks were. The only thing I can think of is either there was a nick in this line and it was a line failure, but it's kind of frayed. I'm wondering if that was a shark and I just got tail swiped. To come this far and spend all this money getting out here to Panama, and have a really slow first day and then that heartache at the end of the day. Uh, that's just a tough pill to swallow right now. That is so discouraging. Well, anytime you come to a new fishery, there's always going to be a learning curve. Uh, I'm just going to have to re-rig all my setups tonight. Make sure everything's in tip-top shape. Maybe bump up to 60 pound fluoro instead of 50. Uh, but I got to figure out how to catch bait first and foremost. That's been my challenge today. Really only got one good bait and uh, lost it. If it had been up to me to catch dinner, we all would have gone hungry. Luckily, the boys at the lump brought home a serious bounty. You guys, I went to the lump today, warm out. It's a lot of tuna. We got Adriano here helping us clean all the fish. Basically, what I grasped from the boat was just like kill everything, except for the reserve fish yeah. and the marlin. Let them go and they're just like, he said he fries them up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's even better the second time, honestly. Like, Y'all are like getting it down yeah. now. It's like by a bio lab road.
right, guys, morning of day two. Uh, I really struggled yesterday, didn't catch anything worthwhile, but luckily the guys that went to the hump found some tuna. Uh, I'm not going to the hump till Thursday, so I'm back out here again. Uh, changed up all my rigs, see if I can't figure out what they want. Uh, looks like we got some rain today, but they tell me that's good for the fishing here. So it's gonna be tough to keep water spots off the lenses, but I'm gonna do my best and hopefully we catch some fish. Let's launch and get to it. Fish out! Pretty heavy drag. If it's Bonita, it's a big one. Feeling kind of head shakes, man. I feel like it's either a shark or a Bonita. Didn't feel that big at first. Feeling a little bigger now. Uh, I see color, yeah. Might be a jack, bro. It's a jack. Damn it. Why are you so strong? It's a big, strong fish, but that was a fun fight. Finally got something sizable to kayak this morning, so I'm feeling a little bit better. Confidence was a little shaken after yesterday, slow day, so at least I got something worthwhile. But let's let this guy go, it's too big to use for bait. Nice little workout early in the morning, get the blood pumping. What you got, Eric? Big old Jack Cabell. Nice. Hey, first fish of the day. I haven't been out here very long. Yep, good sign. Eric McDonald, nice little Jack Cabell. Not exactly what we're going for, but. We'll take it. There's a crazy amount of bait busting right in front of us. Finally. A little bonita, it's exactly what I need. I gotta get this hook ready because I don't want to leave it out of the water very long. We're in business. Got a bonita. That's the bait we're looking for. So now we just gotta hope something wants to eat it. Fish on! Oh, something good. He made a huge run in the beginning. Woo. Oh my gosh, that was a crazy run. Bonita got hit, had it out about 20 minutes. I was worried it was dead, but it's alive. Or it was alive. Oh, oh. Oh man, whatever this is, I've never had a fish run like that in my whole life. It doesn't feel huge, but whatever it is, it's fast. Uh, I'm hoping it, oh. Uh, hoping it's a, you know, maybe small tuna. Oh man, I don't know if I got the camera on in time to get that run on video, but. That was insane. I've never ever had a run like that. Oh, I can see it. It's a tuna. We got a tuna. Oh yeah, decent sized tuna, maybe 15 pounds. That is insane, the run that this thing just made. Oh, it's kind of wrapped up in the line a little bit. I need to hurry up and get this guy in before I lose it. This one's not, ah, oh, it's not done yet. Oh yeah, right through the eyes. Ahead, get my feet out of the way. Uh, uh. Yeah! Finally! In the boat, bro! That was incredible. Dude, the run it made, did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> what? It's hooked in the tail and wrapped through his mouth. Oh man, how incredible. I mean, after a day one where I wasn't catching anything, today I caught that jack early and then couldn't find bait, trolled all the way up to a thousand feet, got nothing. Uh, finally found some Bonita, got one in the boat, perfectly executed, got it on the rig. 
Uh, I think the big difference was I didn't use a wire stinger. I just used straight floral with a single hook. Uh, these tuna can see real well. They can see that wire. And that was the most smoke and run of my life. Hey, how much do you think this weighs? Como el diez? Doce? Because all here says it weighs about 12 pounds, which, I mean, tuna get up to 1,000 pounds. So, you know, relatively it's a baby, but from a kayak, uh, that was one of the more fun fights of my whole life. Oh, man. I've caught way bigger fish that didn't fight nearly as hard as this thing. But Gonzalo said he's seen some more, so I'm gonna put it in the boat, get it on ice, and uh, see if I can't find some more Bonita. Uh, and in the meantime, I'll troll that plug, see if we can't pick up a few more of these guys. That's gonna be sashimi tonight. Woo! Another fish on. It hit that cedar plug. Doesn't feel real big though. Oh, it's a little baby tuna. A little baby yellowfin. Oh, oh, he's stronger than he looks. <laughs> Get him back up here. Should be able to just grab this guy. Nice little baby yellowfin. I mean, he's maybe five pounds, but uh, strong fighter for their size. I mean, tuna, one of the strongest fish out here. Gorgeous colors on it. Even the small ones are worth keeping. I mean, that's sushi grade tuna that we'll be eating here in a couple hours. Doesn't get much fresher than that. We'll throw this guy on ice in the bison cooler and keep him fresh till I go in. <laughs> Tuna just rolled up from the lump. She got six tuna today. Oh my God. And I got two. So that's eight tuna from the kayak. <laughs> both got our first sailfish on the same day, and now we both just got our first yellowfin tuna on the same day. And uh, it's a lot of. So I had a killer day today, you know, after yesterday being a total bust, I was really discouraged and woke up this morning, caught that jacker vol, you know, not a species I'm targeting out here. Uh, I can catch those back home in Texas. Uh, and then being able to, you know, knock off yellowfin tuna, one of the top species I wanted to catch out here, I'm um, on cloud nine. Uh, Morris actually told me that I'm the first to catch a yellowfin tuna here from a kayak in front of the lodge. Everyone else that's ever come here to catch a yellowfin tuna did it at the lump where I'm going tomorrow. Uh, Christina Weber wore them out today out there. She caught six, got six to the boat. So I've got high hopes for tomorrow. I'm gonna go in there, rig up some new leaders before we start cooking up this tuna that we caught today. Uh, we're gonna be eating good tonight. Coming up in part two, we load up the kayaks on a panga and head to the lump, an area where the depth comes up from 300 feet to 30 feet that's notorious for big fish. The yellowfin are chewing, but I make a stubborn decision that cost me what could have been an epic day. And uh, it didn't work. Then, on our final day, I have one fish on my mind, rooster fish. With just hours left before it's time to go home, I finally get a shot at this bucket list species. The rooster! The question is, can I land it? He doesn't look like he's hooked very good. Come here, no, no, no. 